What's up, everybody? It's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership. It is 50 cents a day. And don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com. Get yourself a copy of MIDI Drums Volume 2, the RB Playlist Edition. Amazing pack. MIDI Drums is by far our most popular pack see what everybody's talking about don't forget to stop by spotify and follow the spicy sundays podcast today we're going to be doing something that doesn't work in fl studio it doesn't work in ableton live today we are talking about the mpc so let's get to it now this tutorial is focused on the mpc software using it without the actual mpc you know the mpc2 software is a um, full service doll. You can do everything in it and it's, um, it's 200 bucks. There's advantages of having this software on your computer. And, um, this is for folks who are using, uh, the MPC two software, maybe with a different MIDI controller, a different pad controller. Um, and this is looking at how to chop samples without the MPC, right? With the MPC controller, super intuitive. Um, another thing, even if you do have an MPC controller, the MPC software is the same exact software that runs on the unit in standalone, right? It's all the same features and functions. Uh, the main difference is just that it doesn't have the same time stretch algorithms. Um, this sometimes seeing I know this this worked for me sometimes seeing the stuff in the software coming from the software world into the hardware world will make it connect when you have the controller in front of you so anyhow what i've done is i've loaded one sample onto you know onto pad a1 here right so when we hit it Now to get into chopping this sample, I need to get out of the screen. Up here, we have our sample edit, right? Literally for editing samples. Now the sample edit has, it has three different views, um, which has three different options uh, for different workflows within editing a sample, right? So the first one that we'll look at is the, is the chop. I'm sorry, we'll look at the program, right? And the program, um, just refers to again the program that we're that we're on right here program one it's all the parameters with within that given program that this isn't going to be that useful to you uh what you're where you're going to want to start is you're going to want to start with trim now even if you're using um somebody like timmy holiday or um you know uh crate league or um um kingsway there is going to be most of the times, unless you're using CMP kits, because I because I take care of this shit for you. <laughs> but um, there's going to be like where they bounce the sample. There's going to be some silence and you can see that that will uh, that'll affect how the BPM algorithm picks up. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm using when I'm using other guys samples is just go in real close and I want to and I want to trim this silence right here. All right. So if you hold down shift, you can go in real fine. Uh, I'll snap to, I've got zero snap. Uh, definitely click this. This'll, this'll make sure that you only hit zero crossing points, which will make it so that your samples don't, you know, pop when you trigger them, right? And so, and so now that I have this, I can go over to my functions and I wanna select discard. And just like it says, everything that's, you know, at, after the start and end points is gonna be deleted. Go ahead and click do it. Now I've got my samples starting right away. Okay. So now that so now that I got that, we're all we're all cleaned up and trimmed. I can go ahead, I can go ahead and go to the chop menu, right? So now when you go to the chop menu, there's there's a couple different ways that you can that you can approach this. If you go to this menu here to the right of the pads, okay, you have your different methods of chopping. You can manually chop, which we'll get into here in a second. You can use you can use a threshold, which it what it does is you set a uh, you can set a uh, um, you know like a volume threshold, and it'll pick where it's going to you know where it's going to put these chops. I don't uh, I don't uh, particularly 
use this all that often so i i don't really have an opinion of of if it's good or if it's uh or if it's not but you can you could change the threshold here and it'll give you a different number of samples the lower that you go probably the more set yeah the lower that you go the more chops that you're gonna wind up with okay um the next one the the next one that we can look at is regions regions is what regions does is it's going to take uh the length of of the actual audio file and chop it into equal slices now this is cool if you use like one of my loops where I perfectly trim the the front and the end of it or or if it's like a loop that you've caught on your own. Right. Um, but if you're just if you're dragging somebody else's stuff and like you see like they have a tail, you know, going out and, and stuff like that, like sound designers. I don't know why they think we want the reverb tail. Um, so that for you know for using like third party samples and stuff like that i wouldn't use this i would use regions for something where i caught the sample i chopped a perfect loop i brought it into i brought it into mpc and and now i want to splice it up right um the next one that we have is bpm and in order for bpm to work correctly you want to make sure that when you're in um that when you're in either trim or program that you've went ahead and you've set this, you know, you've set this up correctly. So this is, this is a 158, right? You want to make sure that that's set correctly. Um, then you can go, you can go back into chop, you know, and then from here you could set your time division how many, you know, uh, changing the beats will give you a different number of samples. This is a, sometimes, sometimes this works really well to, you know, to, you know, you know, to get some nice lazy chops, um, super simple, super easy. But the one that I think that everybody wants to see is, is the manual chopping options. Right. And let's just get this out of here. All right, so if we go to if we go to manual, we have one slice. Now, the the way that manual works is 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 it's quite simply what it says. It's manual. Um, there's two ways that you can go about it. You can see that when you that when you put your cursor over the actual wave file, um, you know you can you can go ahead and play a slice. <laughs> So you can just you can just click them in like this and you see it goes it goes here. Now, if you want to, if you want to use your MIDI keyboard, just make sure that when you go to, you want to go to edit, I'm oh, sorry, let's go to preferences. Oh, my bad. I'm tripping. File. Edit program right note mapping and then make sure that you've set this to chromatic c1 that way a is on c1 
once you have your samples um, set up, what you what you need to do after that is you need to convert them to actual samples, right? Because if you just if you go back to the home page and you go to try to play it, you notice none of those samples are on the pad. So what you need to do, the next step that you need to hit is you need to go to non-destructive convert and then uh, select new program. Make sure these two options are selected and go to do it, right? So now when we go back to our home page, we want to go, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to make a brand new program, which is the name of the file that you just chopped. Boom. So now you go here. And that's me triggering the samples on my MIDI keyboard. Super simple. Um, or if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to go ahead and draw them in. Right. It's all it's all right there for you to do. So um, super, you know, super simple, super logical. Once you just start to understand the way that the way that the MPC software um lays out their menu. So if you guys have any more questions about sampling in the MPC software without having an MPC controller, hit me up, put requests in the comments. This is CMP with Craftmaster Productions, studio12tutorials.com. Keep it simple, but don't be basic. And we'll see you on the next one.